So by now, I hope a lot of you know about the news. Uh, net neutrality has been repealed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, apparently 85 percent over Americans voted for this shit to be gone. Apparently, I think it was 83 sorry, percent of Americans didn't want this shit to be repealed. But guess what? Five people got to give the final vote on the FCC ruling. Two of them uh, completely said no, and three of them decided to say fuck yeah, and now we've repealed net neutrality uh, provisions entirely. Well, not yet, not yet, and not, not, not close to it. There's still going to be, there's still got to go through the Congress, still got to go through the House, and still got to go through many legal channels, and potentially as these legal channels, it could actually be challenged by bigger companies or by groups of people who are willing to put up a lawsuit against this kind of a shit or an injunction to an extent, which... One of the biggest defenses we have at this point is contacting senators, House, Congress, all these people, which even though you might think that's a good idea, it might not be because a lot of these uh, political channels seem to already be convinced into pushing the repealing of net neutrality even further. At this point, the only thing that anybody can really do is see if there could be some form of lawsuit or injunction by any of the big tech companies that are actively going to suffer from this kind of a thing occurring. Now, just a quick little primer into what net neutrality is. I've made a couple topic. I made a couple of videos on the topic already. Net neutrality, for those of you who don't know, is the idea that all data packets, all data streams on the internet should be considered fair and equal, and there can be no discrimination by an ISP to one service over the other. This allows you to actually have free and open access to a lot of whatever internet service you want to use, whether that be uh, video sharing services like YouTube, Netflix, Vidme, or what, when that was a thing, uh, Daily Motion, all that kind of good stuff. Whatever news outlet you want to go to, regardless of what it's on the uh, what, what what political uh, side it's taking, whether it be leftist or rightist, or anybody that wants to whistleblow or anybody that wants to tell you about some uh, or any 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 anything on the internet is treated fair and equal. Whether it be inflammatory, whether it be something that uh, the government or the ISP may not necessarily agree with, it is protected. Now, with it gone, ISPs have the ability, if it is gone, the ISPs have a complete ability to basically throttle your internet connection, prevent you from connecting to sites, or charge you extra for specific types of data over the other. For example, the idea of fast lane and slow laning, basically where uh, you will eventually have to pay an extra excess fee to access services such as Netflix or Spotify or media sharing services, or maybe even groups of uh, news websites, anything of the sort. The biggest problem with net neutrality being gone is one thing that I've already covered entirely. It is the fact that this could be a potential game changer when it comes to censorship or uh, the loss of some element of free speech. To me, the internet is a necessity in today's day and age. Uh, you might be one of the people that says, uh, we can go back to the days of using landline phones or uh, postage services, you know, writing actual handwritten uh, messages. And to that, I can actually tell you uh, that in today's day and age, the internet is very much required for people checking their bank accounts, applying to jobs, uh, emailing people for those said jobs, things of the sort. There's a lot of productive necessity that happens through the internet and losing it in any way, shape or form could be detrimental at the most macro of stages and the most micro of stages. Now, I've been watching this live stream uh, for the FCC vote entirely kick in and some of the stuff is incredibly fucking condescending. For example, one of the individuals who was voting against the, uh, or voting to repeal the actual net neutrality provisions said something along the, si uh, something along the signs of the media is uh, scaremongering people, which is far from the fucking truth. This is not about cat videos going off the internet. This is about you favoring corporations, you favoring the ISPs that are going to profit the most out of this by basically chunking people out of more and more money than they already are to this day and age. Now, the individual said something along the lines of if net neutrality is repealed, which it will be, then the ISPs can't just charge you for something overnight because it would cause uh, it would cause people to really hate the ISP that they're subscribed with or cause some form of consumer backlash, which is fucking bullshit because let me tell you the realities of what ISPs are. If you live in America, uh, for example, you often have the choice of just one ISP over the other. These guys hold regional fucking monopolies, meaning that in some parts of the United States, people only have one internet company to pick from. I'm not going to mention sub ISP providers because at the end of the day, they follow under the same blanket umbrella as the big ISP that they're buying or leasing data from. 
The thing is, you only have one choice and maybe the other. The thing is, all ISPs benefit from this to some extent. They're the ones that back channel and make deals with tech companies or any kind of company that deals in the internet to basically chunk out consumers for extra profits in any way, shape, or form. So if you get fucked by Verizon, chances are, if your other option is Time Warner or fucking AT&T, they're also going to fuck you in your ass. The only choice you have at this point is to get a drilling up your anus or to get fucking throat fucked by one or the other. Guess what, motherfucker? I, I, both of those options aren't exactly enticing to me, okay? But if I had to pick, I don't know, maybe I'd get throat fucked over the anal. I, but it's still not enjoyable. You get what I'm saying? It's a shitty situation regardless. Nobody fucking loves their ISP. They're all pieces of fucking shit. We just... We, we, we just have to deal with them. We have to give them our money. Otherwise, we're not connecting to the fucking internet. It's just, it's a matter of us paying them because we fucking have to. You understand what I'm saying over there? It's a necessity that we have to, we have to deal with the fucking in our anuses or our throats or whatever orifice you can imagine just to get online. Now, the other big problem was, was the individual is saying that uh, certain services, you know, things like Netflix won't be overcharged or there, these back channel deals won't happen. Uh, something along the lines of when net neutrality wasn't a thing uh, around 2015 and before, none of this sort of happened, which is massive fucking bullshit because there are many cases of net neutrality basically being fucked over in the eyes of gaining extra money, extra dole in any way, shape or form. For example, there was a point where Google's uh, voice app was actually fucking uh, throttled or outright rejected from many ISPs. Uh, ex well, specifically AT&T just because of an Apple deal. And at the same time, it was because of that deal later on, Apple in 2012 had FaceTime blocked just because AT&T didn't like competition on their network. You see what I'm trying to say over here? Shitty things that happen between these companies that ultimately fuck you over because you lose your choice to do something that these uh, companies don't really start agreeing with. Netflix in 2014 had to create a secret back channel deal with Comcast and Verizon to get better streaming service to consumers. Otherwise, they were on the shittiest end of streaming, which again, passes on to you, the person using the service entirely. The thing is, all these ISPs make a shit ton of money anyways. They are rolling in fucking dough because at the end of the day, you have to fucking buy it from them. It's almost like fucking car insurance and shit. All right, you, you, you have to deal with this shit if, if, you, if, you, if you wanna be in the big boy world. The thing is, they're not losing any fucking money. Uh, they're still swimming around in it. This just gets them, uh, this just gives them the unfair advantage of pushing their service more and more into us so they can, again, chunk us out of a little more dolens than we could ever expect to give them. Now, I don't have to tell you again over and over again that this is a bad thing that has happened, but unfortunately it is. Even with the majority of Americans voting against it, contacting their senators, it still got fucking repealed. It still got a vote in the favor of repealing it. And the problem is when it's sent to those higher legal channels for the final ultimatum, it's still going to get fucking voted against because the people that it's being sent to already fucking side with the FCC and the repealing of this fucking, uh, of this provision anyways. So you're kind of fucked in that regard. The only option you have is if one of the bigger tech companies, Google, Netflix, Apple, all these guys, eventually start putting their money into fighting a legal case against it, or at least injuncting, putting an injunction in some way, shape or form. The thing is, this type of uh, issue affects one of the biggest growing economies in today's day and age, which is technology. Technology is becoming in a way sort of like the new fucking oil market. With these guys being in the limelight, making the money that they make, making the amount of dolens that they do, they're definitely going to fight against this in some way, shape, or form. But again, this could have stopped if the FCC couldn't have repealed it or at least started the process. Now it becomes a long legal battle that you really need to watch because if it goes south in any way, shape, or form, forget you know all the shit you've heard about Netflix. People saying it's going to cost you three dollars to do a fucking Google search, which is bullshit in that regard. I'll tell you that much, but. Forget about just watching videos and having fun on the internet and looking up memes and shit. Think about the actual freedom of speech issues this kind of stuff causes. A lot of people have been making straw man arguments who are siding with this net neutrality re repealing bullshit saying that, oh, this kind of stuff already happens with YouTube and Twitter and then banning accounts. First of all, it's nowhere near comparable. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook are all privately owned websites. They have their own terms of service. If they choose to, you know, ban somebody, that's on them. This is about ISPs offering fair access to all 
these services, all these websites who offer different opinions entirely. The moment that starts to be repealed, the moment you start seeing this shit eliminated is the moment you see basic freedoms and rights, at least in America where this kind of shit is pushed up to the forefront, eliminate. And because America is one of the countries that really deals in a lot of the tech world, tech around the world, all this kind of shit, it's going to eventually trickle down to everyone in any continent of the world entirely. What happened in America affects everybody else entirely. And even if Americans didn't want it, it still got fucking repealed. So it's a sign of how shitty the system is down over there, but there is still a glimmering hope that it could still be repealed. And in some way, it Whatever this long legal battle eventually leads up to, we're going to need to watch over how these companies start fighting back against the government when it comes to the net neutrality uh, repealing. Because even before net neutrality laws basically were a provision, this kind of shady shit has been happening with ISPs, creating fucking bullshit deals with other tech companies or throttling people or basically trying to eke out money from the corporations and consumer alike. This only benefits – those who provide you the internet. This only benefits your Verizons, your AT&Ts, the people that are actively trying to fuck you in the ass to get as much money out of you for bullshit service and fees that they know you have to deal with because they hold monopolies. The reality is, people, you're the ones who paid the tax money to help create these internet infrastructures. How did you do that? Because the same tax money you gave ended up giving these companies massive tax cuts, tax breaks, little uh, injunction, little injections of money into their companies. And it's because of that that the internet is so profitable for them and it's to a state where it is now. The government now wants you to fucking pay extra just to the privilege of using the shit you already, in an essence, paid for with your own tax money. There's a lot of legal stuff. There's a lot of complicated stuff that ties into it that you just can't simply put in a video. But unfortunately, what happened happened in a very negative light. It started a process that really shouldn't have been started in the first place. And only a few people really benefit from this. ISPs, Agit Pai's fucking bank account, maybe. And... It doesn't benefit anybody else. Everyone is fucking pissed about it and they have a right to be. Those who tell you that this is scaremongering or that you shouldn't worry about it are those that are in a way profiting off of this in some way, shape or form. This is a basic protection that I think the internet needs. A lot of people who really do care about the internet, the EFF, everyone, they give a shit about this stuff and they should. And if you like watching these videos on YouTube, you should give a shit about net neutrality as well too. So. It's not the end of the world. You can still contact your senators, even though I don't know how much help that's really going to do. Let's just hope the big tech companies who run this website and many other tech websites that we go to on a daily basis start fighting against this shit, ladies and gentlemen. What happened is bullshit, but it is not the end of the world. Let's all hope for the best. Going back to normal gameplay, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it, I am out.